Hey, this is Stephen from Wild Stuff. Welcome to the show. In this video, I'm heading off on a road trip on my Honda ADV150 scooter, doing a big anti-clockwise circuit from the Hunter Valley up through Narrabri, then out to Walgett and Burke, then back down to Ningen and Parks, and then back home again. All up, it should be just under 2,000 Ks and take about four days. So I started the dashboard trip meter counting at my favourite roadhouse cafe in Nolkabar after an epic bacon, egg, sausage and hash brown breakfast wrap and I started heading north. The ADV150 has a lot of built-in trip meter functions such as instantaneous fuel consumption, average fuel consumption, odometer, etc, etc, so I'll be able to give you a full summary of mileage and fuel consumption and all that after the trip. So I'm following the New England Highway as it goes through Singleton, Musselbrook, Scone, Murrurundi, then veering off onto the Camilleroy Highway to go through Corindai, Gunnada, and then onto Narrabri. So here's the turn off from the New England Highway onto the Camilleroy Highway. Pardon the squished bug right there on my camera lens, it won't be there for long. The first little spot of sightseeing I did was a short detour up the hill in Corindai to see the Who'da Thought It Lookout, and yes, that's its real name. It doesn't take long once you leave Quirindai, and the highway becomes a 110k zone, which is the first time I've ever seen that on a single carriageway, and you find yourself in the vast open plains approaching Gunnada. It's at this point you first start to get a sense of just how vast this country is. Now here's one thing I've noticed about these country drivers. You can see the silver ute in my right side mirror there. They've caught up with me over quite some time and sat back at a very generous distance, waiting until the road is completely straight for miles ahead. They've ignored many opportunities to overtake that a city driver would have pounced on, but only once the road was totally clear, they've completely changed lanes, then moved ahead well clear of me, indicated, and slowly merged back in. It was an absolutely perfect and courteous overtake, and I saw this time and time again over the next few days. I guess it's easy to be a good driver when you have all the space in the world. There's another example right here. These guys look like they're packed for a pretty big adventure. So almost five hours later, I rolled into Narrabri. I had my pick of all the usual multinational fast food options, and I booked myself into the Bellevue Motor Inn, 110 bucks a night, and just a short walk from Coles. So, day two. There's a lot more of the Camilleroy Highway planned for today, as well as a slight detour to the CSIRO Compact Telescope Array just outside of Narrabri. Silly me forgot to check the map first and ended up at Weewa before I had to double back to see the observatory. The short version of the observatory story is that there's a 3 km track that they can move a series of these 22 metre dishes back and forth along. It can be a bit awkward when you're standing at the visitor centre near the centre of the track, hoping for a great photo, and the dishes are up near the opposite far ends of the track. I should have brought my big zoom lens.
At this point I was wondering, why is that caravan on my side of the road? Then I saw it. Roadkill and a massive wedge-tailed eagle. Let's see him again in slow-mo. I learned something important about motorbikes on this adventure, that high speeds and headwinds over prolonged distances can have a dramatic impact on your fuel economy and therefore also your effective riding range. So despite my usual range of maybe 320 k's from a tank at regular speeds around home, busting out 110 k's an hour into a strong headwind across outback New South Wales meant that I came limping into Walgett with my empty light flashing after only 230 kilometers. I did have a spare litre and a fuel bottle in my bag, so I would have been fine anyway, but it was an important lesson to learn. I also had my first experience of the Great Aussie Road Train. I quickly learned to brace myself for the blast of wind turbulence from these guys. It was hard to tell exactly how big they were as they flashed past, but when I replayed the footage, four trailers was pretty common. Finally, after nearly two days riding, I spotted something way out in the fields on the left that I'd been hoping to see. So I pulled over, dug out my camera, and did my best to balance it on that fence. Again, I was wishing I'd brought my big zoom lens, struggling to stabilize a compact camera with four times zoom on a fence made of star pickets. So day two came to an end as I rolled into the outback town of Burke. I booked into the major Mitchell Motor Inn and spent $16 plus a public holiday surcharge on this half a handful of takeaway fish and chips from the Burke Bolo. I think there's about six chips in there. So day three. The westward leg of my trip is now over and I'm hooking back southeast onto the Mitchell Highway towards Ningen along what has to be one of Australia's longest, straightest and most mind-numbing roads. There's a couple of gentle curves in the road as you leave Burke, but then you get this, and more of this, for over 200 kilometres all the way to Ningen, with only the tiny little village of Coolabar to break the monotony somewhere in the middle. Ooh, is that lavender? Very pretty. So Ningen is a cute little town I wouldn't mind revisiting. On the main street they've got an RAAF helicopter on display in a park. Obviously it has some local historical significance, but I haven't yet gotten around to researching that. They also have a monument to a big bogan. So far the ADV-150 has performed superbly, holding highway speeds and even the occasional overtake, though not having a lot of top-end power means you need plenty of space to do it. Combined with the comfortable seat and the loads of underseat storage, it seems to be the perfect bike for light touring adventures like this. Soon I'll be exiting the Mitchell Highway at Narromine and head south towards Parks to go see the big radio dish.
The whole trip has been a bug massacre of mostly little moths. No matter how often I cleaned my visor, it'd be filthy again after 20 minutes with bug guts splattered everywhere. You'd see them fluttering around on the roadside as you approached, then it was like they'd deliberately hone in on your face. I took one directly to the throat, which stung like hell, and another one disappeared up my jacket sleeve at 110k an hour and exploded somewhere near my elbow. Here's a couple that have just met my camera lens before I took the turn off to the dish. The park's radio dish has a diameter of 64 metres, making it much larger than the dishes at Narrabri. Apparently it was quite instrumental in the original Apollo moon landing mission. There's a good movie about it starring Sam Neill called The Dish, which is worth a watch. So after a few selfies with the dish, I headed into parks and booked into a room at the Coachman Hotel and had myself a big Bistro Works burger for dinner. So, day four. This day will really just be the trip back home to the Hunter Valley with no specific sightseeing planned except for the spectacular countryside along the way. and turning off Ulan Road onto the Golden Highway. At this point I was keen to get around this slow moving caravan and overtook it while going up one of the bigger hills leading into Meriwa. I was in a full tuck position and giving it everything my poor little scooter had. I was losing speed but luckily so was the caravan. And then just over the hill, another slow moving truck. And finally, 1,743 kilometres and four days later, I rolled back into the servo at Nogbar. I'll put a summary up on the screen of the distance and fuel consumption. Pause the video here now if you're interested in the stats. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more adventures.